So, I don't know what the chances of who's going to show up today, but I wanted to talk about my mom. So I'm here in Felipe Park because I wanted to find a, neutri a neutral spot, a space where I could just sit and be alone. I wasn't prepared to lose my mom right now. She was really the person that inspired me to be who I am today. I want my mom back. I would do anything right now to have just heard her voice, to have just been able to spend more time with her. when I got up to get ready to go to my do my practice there was a, a dragonfly in the house a really big one too with a wide wingspan and a long body it was an older wiser dragonfly and if you were to know my mom signs from nature are like super huge butterflies and dragonflies and the birds and the rainbows. I don't even know how it got in the house. But it just brought me to tears because I realized she may not be here in the body but she's going to keep showing up. If I could just impart one thing to anybody out there. Tell those you love, you love them. Don't let time go by. Don't regret. Don't have regrets. Don't push people away because stuff isn't working. I've had so much anger and so much conflict and so much frustration going on in my mind, my body. Even during the times when my sisters were going through their stuff and old stuff came up, I had my own stuff going on. I didn't let it bother me that much because I could see that they themselves are going through things. But I had my moments too when my old stuff was being triggered and I was dealing with that. You can't push away what you feel. And we sometimes still have stuff to work through. And nobody can tell you that you should just suck it up and move forward. And my mom knows my heart better than anybody out there. She's the one person who knows. Who knows what I've been through in life. How hard I've tried. what I had to do when we were growing up. <laughs> Times when I would be upset, my mom would say, remember, you were doing the best you could. When I was in the Air Force and I had different struggles throughout the course of my career, I had weird shit happening. I had people who wanted to control every aspect of what I did during my career. They wanted to be able to tell me what to do. And I admit, that's one of my old things. I'm a whole lot better. I have a lot more patience with myself now. My mom would remind me when I was working how when I lived in DC and I wanted to go and do more. I said, you know, I wish I'd seen more. I've been able to go to museums more or go to the Museum of Natural 
of, of um, Library of Congress and all that. And she would say, Hana, you were going to school, you were working, when did you have the time? Because during my career, I spent most of my time focused on getting my degrees, bettering myself, doing what we are all told is the right path. I did everything I thought was supposed to be the right path. I had the good job, I had the money. But I didn't start working on healing myself right away. I had to actually be faced with my family stuff by seeing myself replaying old roles and the hurt of my mom and my dad. My biggest prayer for my mom had always been that I wished she would realize how much she deserved and how much more she, she, she really truly blew. She was a beautiful woman. She had such a big heart. She was so wise and knowledgeable. She didn't give herself credit she deserved. She didn't feel worthy. She pushed away even the love of my stepdad who loved her so much. Oh my gosh, if anybody could have that love, no matter what you're going through, a man who shows up and says that he's doing the best he can, but he'll try again more. He'll try harder and harder. And if you knew my mom, it wasn't easy to love her sometimes. My mom tried to commit suicide so many times during the course of my life. And we never knew what to expect. And how many times I get a phone call and I'd be like, <laughs> nobody could force her to want to live, let alone live while alive. I thought I'd have more time with her. <laughs> when Tom talked about his mother having cancer. I had a moment before, this was before I knew anything was going on with my mom. I had a moment and was really reflective and saying, I don't know what I would do. I can't imagine losing my mom. The last thing I expected was to lose my mom. <laughs> Don't ever let anybody tell you that it's easy. I was close with my mom, but not as close as I had been in the past years. And we only just started really having beautiful conversations again. But the thing that strikes me the most is I can't believe it had been over eight years since I'd seen her and to see her laying in that bed. tears me up that I couldn't do anything to bring her back. <laughs> it weighs very heavy on my heart and it really hurts so deeply. I can't, I can't even express it. And when they gave us these bears, <laughs> this is the sound of her heartbeat. <laughs> it's what I have left of her. <laughs> what do you do? How do you come back from this? What do you do next? is closing soon. 
so this will be cut short shortly. How much more time? Twenty minutes. Twenty. Sharp. Thank you, dear. Does this belong to you? Hmm? Does this belong to you, a little white feather? I'll take it. That must be your. Is that your water bottle up there on the bench? No. No. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. Take care. You too. Sometimes our loved ones show up when we least expect it. And these people can show up in your life. And the question is, is are you going to recognize them for the gift that they are? Are you going to see a burden? <laughs> you know, there were many times I was angry with my mom and my dad. But it really, when it really boils down to it, I wouldn't change anything. Just like anybody I've ever had in my life, but I said a lot of things to my mom that I I look back on. And I wish I hadn't, but I know she knows that I didn't mean them. Most of the time, it was when I was a teenager, in those rebellious states, right? I'm sorry I'm not talking very, I'm all over the place, because that's how I feel right now. She was my best friend for so long. Even if I wasn't speaking to her as regularly as I used to in the past, she was the only person who knows my heart. And she would say things like, she knew how sensitive I was. She knew how much I'd gone through. She would rub my shoulders because she knew how much I carried in my life. <laughs> how much I had to grow up when we were kids. She knew. And although she wasn't a hundred percent available for all of us when we always we may have needed her. She was, I feel to me, very close in my heart. I feel she was closer. <laughs> because I got to spend probably the most time with her a lot when I was a baby. She used to say, I never want what happened to you kids, what happened to me as a child, to happen to you kids. But I'm going to tell you right now. My mom didn't have an easy life, and I don't know all the stories. I don't know everything that happened to her, but in my heart I knew I didn't need her to explain. I loved her no matter what. But so often we're afraid of how people will judge us if they know the truth or our stories and our past. So we deny ourselves the opportunity to, to reveal it and share it. And she never got a chance to tell her story, nor had the courage to tell us all those years. And I knew it was because she was afraid of how we would have looked at her, or if we would have rejected her. The biggest fear we, I know myself I have, my mom clearly had, was the fear of being rejected for someone knowing us deeply for knowing our pains and knowing our hurts. And you know why? Because I know my mom would say, because people use your weaknesses against you. <laughs> Turn things around on you, make you sound like something you're not, just because it's easier to put you down than lift you up. She had many problems with allowing people to help her 
So instead she focused on helping others. And that's something she was really good at, is showing up and helping others who are in need. Because she couldn't show up to help herself. <laughs> Rejection. You know, I'm going to say right now, it, it's an easy pattern to push away those you love because that's who we hurt the most because we don't want to be rejected ourselves. And that was a big pattern in my life is to push people away because I didn't want them to be the one to do it to me first. But that didn't serve me. And that's the one thing that's driven me recently is to know that I'll show up no matter what. My biggest prayer right now is that my mom helps guide me. Because she knows my heart the best. I can't turn to her and call her and ask her for advice. But I know that she's with me. As she keeps showing up. Boy, my timing is horrible today. <laughs> My biggest request is that if you could just keep me in your heart and prayers, I would really appreciate it. I'm just in such a place of, of confusion right now. I'm in a park with people talking. Got the cicadas making that loud noise. Getting out in nature to get outside of myself. <sighs> There's so much. Feel really alone right now okay so that's where I'm really at in the moment I want you to all know how much I truly appreciate your support and the donations that we've received in the next couple days I'll be sitting down so I can give you a recap of how those expenses were divided. Tomorrow, my sister organized a memorial in Omaha that I didn't know about until this morning. Apparently she was texting me that they arranged a memorial for tomorrow. At a Seventh-day Adventist church where she often went. See, my mom was raised Catholic, and there's so much coming out now about churches and families and sexual abuse and trauma, and not everybody has the strength to speak up this Me Too movement, because for years, we as women have been told to suck it up, baby. You wanted it. You did something to deserve it. All sorts of excuses to validate or justify individuals who were perpetrators and predators. Even worse is when it's your family and nobody wants to talk about it. And there's so much angst and animosity towards siblings because those things can separate and divide family members as well. My mom was the middle of six children. You know, gr apparently my grandfather wasn't a saint. He put fear in us as grandchildren. He never did anything to me that I know of. But the fear he put in us from being a big 
man physically but apparently also through his his tactics his bullying my aunt was sharing some stories about how everybody was afraid of his reaction to situations even if it wasn't it wasn't that a sibling did anything to another sibling often it was just something trivial something stupid it gave him an excuse to show look watch this this is what you get it was totally unkind uncalled for unnecessary I don't know how my grandmother did it just with the few stories I heard but the stories I knew weren't so bad my mother was much um, kinder I am gonna move because there was a strange relationship with my grand my fa grandfather and my mother my grandfather and my grandmother got divorced because my grandfather had an affair with his with my sis my mother's best friend <laughs> and then you know had two more children and he alienated his wife my mother's best friend from the family as well and these are the things that we don't hear about we don't know because nobody wants to talk about this stuff nobody wants to talk about how it's easier for a man to get away with stuff than it is for women to speak about the unjust injustices. It makes me angry when I think about all the things that I know my mom went through. It makes me angry for the things I dealt with, whether it was when I was in the Air Force or when I was in contracting for the government. How as a woman, you have to work that much harder. Prove yourself. You know, I don't even have to explain. Women, we usually don't need to explain. But people try to turn it around on us because that's how our culture, our society has been. Oh, you're supposed to be this and you're supposed to be so much better. And you're supposed to know better, by the way. You know, the idea that, you know, everything that we do as women is supposed to be for others. But the moment we think of ourselves, we're the selfish ones. The moment we think about self-care, hmm, we're not thinking of someone else. And as I've learned in my trainings, and the irony is, is if I'm thinking about myself first, are you mad because I'm not thinking about you? I've had that conversation before. You know, like, you're so selfish. My dad would say that sometimes. And I'm like, Okay, selfish. You mean because I'm not thinking about you all the time, but maybe it's just the majority of the time. I have a lot of anger, but not as much as I used to. If anything, it's, it's going to make me drive even harder. Because honestly, I've had a lot of bullying in my life. And I know a lot of women out there I also have. That it's easy for men to turn around and make us feel like shit when they're feeling like shit. You know, we show up for people. And I, I, I talked about this before in the past. When the going gets tough, can you stick it out? Or are you going to turn around and you're going to just run and hide? That's a test of true character and integrity. And yeah, some of what I'm saying right now is just talking. But a lot of it is what's inside of me that needs to come out. Because I'm being raw. And this is who I am and where I'm at at this point in my life. And what I'm feeling. You know, over the course of my life in relationships, I've had people tell me how they're going to show up for me. They're going to support me. But when it really boiled down to it, the support that I was receiving wasn't what they were claiming. When someone says, I love you, it's not the words that count. It's the action that speaks. I had some moments during my trip where I got upset because 
my sisters were handling things a little differently than I, I do, a little, a lot. But I, I can't expect them to show up the way I am. And that's why I'm compassionate and understanding and knowing where they're at. I don't try to push my way of lifestyle on anybody. In fact, I'll be honest, I so did not eat well on this trip. All I could do was grab what was in packages, already pre-made, you know, some fruits and vegetables here and there, but oh my gosh. My skin's breaking out, my lips are chapped, I've got splits in my lips. I'm so dehydrated, it's not funny. I just want my mom to come back and just hold me and tell me everything's gonna be okay. What do you do when you feel like your world is falling apart around you and your mom has just passed? And you just want to run and hide. Go under the covers. And then I've, I've been struggling enough as it is with sleep. And my moon cycle started a week early. Stress will do that, right ladies? And I'm bleeding. And I'm bleeding. On so many different levels. I want to say thank you for just tuning in. I'm, I'm going to sign off now. Just keep me in your prayers. I don't know what's next. But I'll still show up as best I can. Because that's what I try to do. And you can only be true to you. I love you.